Hey everybody, this is Dave Cooper and we are at British Offsite in England and sitting with me is Nick Cabre from Howick, CEO, and also Sean Weston from British Offsite. Sean, thank you for hosting us here today. No, no, it's, it's great to have you down. Thank you for coming all the way over here to see our, uh, to see our little prop operation. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really pleased that we can get out on site today and show you what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is going to be an amazing operation. I mean, this is only a small part of what's to come, and I'm super excited for you. Nick, let's start off with you, though. You know, we talk about Howick. Um, your machines are all over the world. They're used everywhere. How are you seeing your machines advance construction, advance modern methods of construction, advancing prefab, whatever we want to call it? Yeah, so we've always seen them as a tool. So whether you're building a house or whether you're going full automation, we can fit in between somewhere there. So the idea is that we give people accuracy and consistency and control of the process. So rather than just buying in links and cutting it by hand and relying on people, we can actually automate that process. And that process that we do, which is the components, right. then allows you to kind of automate the frame. And from the frame, then you can automate everything else if you want to go that far. So you can go simple, or you can go super complex, or you can go somewhere in the middle, which is where the sort of sweet spot is at the moment. Right. And, and so when, when the framing process, your machine actually takes in data and builds walls and sections already pre-cut to accuracy. Yeah. So we take the panel and then we make it in sequence, ready for assembly. So your typical idea is it will come straight off the machine, straight into an assembly process, rather than into a big stack of parts that you then have to sort through. Right. So from that CAD model, which people always, always have the CAD model because the architects draw a CAD model, the next step is transferring that model into a machine design model and then feeding it into the line. And how about yourself, Sean? So you guys are using Howick machines on your manufacturing floor. You're going to be using it in the new manufacturing facility that's getting ready to open. And we'll touch on that in a little bit. When you came into Weston Homes with British Offsite, what made you say, you know, I think we can build it better? What made you say, I think we can do things to the next level with higher efficiency, higher safety, better quality control, and healthier living for the occupants? Well, I think as a developer, you know, you're constantly looking for ways to um, be more productive, um, improve your quality. Uh, and, you know, traditionally we have a, a stick built SFS system. That's something which is you know, very, very well used on British construction sites. Um, and really it's for us, you know, seeing, seeing that come together in a, you know, much more simplified process by the use of machinery like the Howick. Um, and then actually using that as a platform to really sort of carry that forwards and go from a steel frame to a closed panel system to a fully dressed panel system and deliver more and more efficiency into the into a build process. Right, into the build process. To the point where behind us, and we did a walkthrough and we're going to share that with everybody, was kind of the prototyping of your new system. And it's been so successful that you're getting ready to build, right, 137,000 square foot manufacturing facility for the most part, fully automated. Yeah, so yeah, like you say, you know, we've come from Western Homes, um, and actually we had a product before we had British Offsite, um, and actually we felt that the product had so much potential we needed a platform to grow that from. Um, so we incorporated British Offsite, and then we've developed this production process you can see behind us. And this was only ever intended as a kind of a, a live prototyping environment, and um, a, lot, a lot of the machinery we designed ourselves work with local engineering companies um, to gradually improve that production process. Um, and actually we found ourselves, despite the fact it was a prototype production line, we were in a position to start sort of really scaling up. Um, and actually in our first 12 months of, uh, of true production, we delivered 400, 450 new homes using wow. that methodology. Um, and now we've been running for 18 months. Um, we're probably close to cracking a thousand, which will be a big milestone for us. We'll get the champagne out. Um, but you know, it's, it's, that's allowed us to sort of progressively improve that production process, flush any grit out of it, make sure that the processes are really good, the staff are well trained, you know, build a good culture, so that when you go into a bigger production facility, you're bringing all the good habits with you, rather than going straight into that and then having to figure it out along the way. Right, right. So it's been a progressive process for us, and we're really ready for the next step now. We can't wait to get in the yeah, new yeah. factory. So we're getting into the automation. I'm going to go back to you uh, on this, Nick, as well. 
your framing process is a key component. Your frame, your cut machine, your Howick machine for the framing process is a super key component to everything that you guys do. And to get the precision and accuracy you need on site, you can't do it without his machine, can you? No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely underpins everything we do is actually the Howick machine and the uh, the right. light gauge steel, the click together system and the precision. Yeah. And what's your thoughts on what you're seeing happening here with the machines you guys have, have developed over the years? Yeah, it's really impressive to see people actually driving it and taking it to that next level. Yeah. So when you think of it as you were just saying before, the framing is really the skeleton everything's built on. Right. And we're a small part of that picture and we'd like to sort of work with people to figure out what else can we do with the framing that then allows that next step to be easier and that next step to be easier again? So, yeah. And that's it, it's being part of a team, right? When you work with suppliers, with vendors, with equipment suppliers, they, they essentially become part of your Western team or your British offsite team, don't they? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and as we go into the new factory, the level of automation which we're bringing in, um, actually me and Nick were downstairs nerding out over a panel and some of the little details we might want to change to make sure that the automation works properly and actually that kind of collaboration together and make sure that you're delivering something which just works properly. There is nerds in the construction industry for sure and they just proved that. One of the most cool things that I've done in a while was a virtual walkthrough. We were doing that earlier. So let's talk about construction tech and how you're looking to both of you bring this into the industry and what's going on. We'll start with you, Sean, because you, the factory's not even built and we did a virtual walkthrough as if you're in the factory. No, I, I, think, I think when you want to achieve world-class manufacturing standards, you have to use world-class world techniques. And, um, right. you know, uh, things like the digital twin, which allows us to make sure that we're deploying lean principles right in the, the core of the manufacturing process, right from day one, and um, to make sure that there's no waste, um, reducing non-added value labor. You know, the digital twin and the VR, I was worried it would be a bit of a gimmick, to be honest, but actually it's a really, really useful tool. Um, and right now we're on factory layout and we'll build more and more and more detail into the model as we go. It allows us to make sure that it's right first time. Yeah. And Nick, how about yourself, you know, and Howick? What, what does the future of tech look like for you? Yeah, well, we, we've got a good platform that we can build on. There's all sorts of things like we were just talking before about the potential of the non-value added labor. How can we get rid of all that? Right. And it might be something as simple as punching a different hole or maybe it's a different section or whatever it is, but it's that whole process of engaging with customers and the guys on site as well, to actually go to the sites and see there. So that's going to drive construction. The problem we've had is everybody backloads it with lots of labor rather than front load it with actually some thought and design. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing here is there's some actual real thought gone into what is the process of putting the building up? Not what is the cheapest way I can do it? What is the best, most efficient way I can do it? Right. Which happens to then make it a cheaper construction process. And that's what we're starting to see. And you've got to work with people like Sean here to have them make that happen because right. you know, if people are not interested in driving it forward, it's not going to happen. You know, it, it's very true. And Sean, with your system as well, the way you developed it, um, I mean, you can start after the fact if you had to on somebody's high rise building, for instance, but it's definitely not the most efficient way to do it. No, no. And the earlier you can get in the design process, absolutely the better. You know, Nick touches on saying there that's really, really important is making sure that the quality of the design up front um, actually, t typical builder, you know, we first started the system and, right, we, we need more product out. So what do you do? You put more labor effectively in production. And actually, it's taken us a long time to realize that actually we shouldn't invest money down there. We should invest money and time in the design. That's right. Um, and eliminating some of the waste. You know, every time you have to rework something, you know, the construction industry is a re rework industry. Right, right. Um, and really, you want to eliminate that. Um, and improve the culture right from the start. So absolutely, you know, investing time in design, um, making sure that we're able to transition people from the traditionally designed projects right. um, into MMC without having to re-engineer them. It takes a really, really top-notch design team up front. It does, and it takes that thinking up front to do it. And, you know, you put the proper planning in up front, we see this all around the world, the people that are embracing, you know, Howick machines, you know, and off-site technology that, the, the savings is in the upfront cost of the design, right? It doesn't make sense that we have change orders anymore. It blows my mind that we still build something. Go, oh, well, we missed that. You know, when we're sending autonomous vehicles to Mars and back with nobody in it, but we can't build a building or a house. So I 100% agree. And Nick, you're absolutely right. Like if we could change the mentality of how people think of their buildings and put that uh, time and planning in upfront, it would be, it'd be a huge change across the globe quickly.
Definitely. So, all right, we're here because of how is putting on an event, Steel Horizon. And what I love about this event is you're bringing people in from all over the world. You know, British offsite, right? We got people coming in from Poland, people coming in from the United States to learn, you know, and, and talk about how do we advance this industry? You want to talk a little bit more about it, Nick? Yeah, well, the whole idea behind it is really to get people to come and sit down and discuss things and open their eyes to, we've got some great architects and some automation people and there's lots of things going on there that it's not really about a conferences and selling things, it's about making people come together and actually think that, okay, you're doing that, I'm doing that, maybe we can put these two or three things together and then come out with a better solution that everybody can use. So it's all about information centering and knowledge and just generally having a chat with people from the industry who want to move forward together. And it's one thing I think we'll find is a lot of the people coming are there because they want to move forward. It's not like a normal conference where you go to and people come and they just are coming to sit on a seat and be told something. We want everybody to move together because as we were talking about before, you know, it's all a kit of parts. And most people can go out and get that kit of parts. It's how you put it together that really counts. And this is where we get to the ideas of cost certainty for buildings. So rather than reworks and things blowing out, we can give a pretty certain cost that, hey, it's going to be this within this ballpark, and it's always going to be that. And that's what we're trying to drive that thinking. Well, it's the collaboration. It's the not being out on an island by yourself. I mean, if we sit there and take a look at it, you know, uh, British Offsite, Western Homes, Sean, I mean, you guys are doing a lot of high-rise, big projects, but yet you're willing to share what you're doing. And I think that's super important because, you know, other people are out there trying to do things better as well. And there's all great ideas to do, and you guys are willing to share your ideas, have us in your manufacturer and sit down with me, let me film anything I want to film, right? But have a good time at it, because it's all about advancing the industry and advancing how we film. No, and I think it's actually um, very, very brave of Howick to try and pull together all these people throughout the industry together, um, sort of foster that thought leadership about the right ways to take it forward. I mean, generally speaking, um, you know, construction can be a little adversarial, um, a little closed-minded, and actually, we wouldn't necessarily be going outwards to collaborate with these other other developers and you know effectively our competition. So actually, having some people like Howick, like Nick, say, "No, that's not the right thing to do. Let's get together." You know, is, uh, is really refreshing. Nick's corralling us. He is bringing us together. Well, that's what it's all about. So listen, Nick, I appreciate you having us out here to talk about Steel Horizons and bring us to all these amazing manufacturing facilities and the people that are using the Howick machines. And I mean, Sean, the way you opened up the door in the high rise buildings, wait till you see these videos. You guys are going to love it. And we even went through the production process. And I heard them coming back for the grand opening of the new facility. Absolutely. Right, yeah. Which is going to be quite amazing as well. So thank you. I hope you got a taste of champagne. I can have <laughs> only the good stuff. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it. My name is Dave Cooper, Dave Cooper Live, and we are in England. And right now we are in British Offsite Manufacturing Facility, and we're here with Howick for Steel Horizons. We'll see you next time. <laughs>